Okay. Yeah, anytime. Oh, show Fabian, take one. I love taking pictures. Um, I really do. I, I see things, I envision things, and then if I can go catch it, um, it makes me happy for some reason. And then when I see other people enjoying it too, that's great. Uh, growing up, uh, I was born in Detroit near Denby High School, and that was, uh, and, and I came from a very big family. There was eight children. So I had a lot of brothers and sisters to play with, and the block I lived on uh, had 60 kids that were grade school age. So going outside in the summer, I mean, it was like a playground. Kids everywhere doing everything. There was always something to do. It was a lot of fun. In school, I uh, enjoyed uh, art, naturally. Um, when I was in grade school, I liked playing football. And when I went to high school, again, I liked my art class, but I had gotten into music and uh, learned how to play the saxophone. So when I got in high school, I uh, was sort of torn. Should I play in the band or on the football team? So the guy sitting next to me uh, was joining the football team, and I asked him how much he weighed, and he weighed twice as much as I did. So that made that decision very easy. Uh, I was fortunate uh, when Vietnam was uh, starting to wind up, and I could see the writing on the wall, and I got a draft notice, and uh, I found out they had an Army Reserve band. So uh, my buddy and I, who was in the same boat I was, we went down and we were fortunate enough to get into the 70th Division band. When I, when I was in the, the band, I didn't do much with the camera then. It was mostly just music. We would, uh, when we'd go on active duty, we would put on shows for veterans or marching parades, things like that, but uh, not much photography when I was in, in those days. My dad was such an influence on my life. Uh, first of all, he was such a, a good father, um, a good disciplinarian, uh, made sure we worked for what we had. Um, he, when he was in high school, his dad died in a cave-in in a small coal, coal mining town that they lived in. And um, he had to quit the football team and quit school and go to work in the mines. So. Uh, that lasted for, I'm not sure how many years before he got married. Uh, so he married my mom. She was from another small coal mining town. And uh, he worked in the coal mines and uh, it was the depression area. And uh, work was slow even for coal mines. So they shut the coal mine down for a while. And my dad uh, thought this would be a good time to visit my uncle Lewis, who had moved to Detroit and was working at Chrysler. So my mom and dad, and I think my older sister was, had been born by that time, they packed up and were coming to Detroit with the intention of making it a two-week visit. So while they were visiting, my Uncle Lewis had applied for the Detroit Police Department, and uh, they called him up. So he had a job with the police. So he told my dad, you go to Chrysler under my name. So my dad went to Chrysler uh, using an alias, Lewis Fabian, and worked there for, I think, quite a few years. I worked for my dad in the summers as and I would drive uh, parts to the servicemen all around Detroit. And uh, he got to a point where he was always subbing out his sheet metal work and he decided uh, to start his own sheet metal shop. So he added on to the billing there across from the Better Made Potato Chip Factory. 
and got some sheet metal guys working there and uh, I'd be walking by and seeing what these guys do and one day I saw this guy uh, make this real curvy piece of ductwork. I thought, wow, is that cool? They make everything out of just flat sheets of metal. So uh, that got me interested in sheet metal. So I uh, went and took the sheet metal apprenticeship test, passed and got in the trade. Uh, when I first got married, our first flat had a fireplace and there was nothing above the fireplace. And I thought, like a coat of arms or something would look good up on there. So I ended up making like a breastplate from a knight in shining armor and hanging that up. And one thing led to another and the next thing I was just, I was just having fun making things out of metal on my own time. I was fortunate enough to be running a shop and uh, so I had all the welding tools, iron, everything available. And um, we needed a new fence, so I thought wrought iron fences looked really nice. You see them in Gross Point, you know? So uh, I decided to make a wrought iron fence. Well, then I had to make a gate, and my wife loves chickadees and cardinals. So the, I came up with a design that, uh, for the gate, and then I cut out a metal, some, a couple chickadees that I put on there for her. I first got into photography uh, when I was old enough to buy a camera, but uh, it was just an on, an on and off fun thing to do, you know, through my growing up years. Um, but when I retired, that's when I really got into it because I had the time to, to do whatever I wanted to do, shoot whatever I wanted to shoot. My first camera was probably a Kodak Instamatic or a Brownie. I, I'm not sure, but I know it was probably one of those two. And uh, somehow I got this camera, and got film for it, and right off the bat, the first thing I wanted to do was do some trick photography. So one of my uh, siblings had a 1950 style bank uh, that was shaped like a rocket, probably about this tall. So I uh, had some of my friends come over, and I set that rocket in the front of the house on the drive, and I had my friends walk way back to the back of the lot and stand, stand next to it, and I got down you know, level and took a shot, and it looked like um, looked like my friends were standing next to a big rocket ship. You know, I still remember we all got a kick out of that. That was fun. My brother Dick and I started a long time ago um, taking movies. As soon as they came out with the Super 8 camera, we were making movies and sending them back and forth. And then when it came to uh, videotapes, which made it easier and better. I made a tape that made fun of him. So I had all my kids, my wife, everybody in this whole thing making fun of him. Well, he had to outdo me, so he made another video back. So we went back and forth like this, um, and it, we'd get my parents involved. <laughs> the whole family would be involved in these videos. They are so stupid, but they're funny when you watch them. So then uh, when he retired and uh, he started he told me he was going to buy a, a Adobe Photoshop, you know, and he told me about it. So I said, hmm, I think I'll do that too. Well, we started off with that, and it's, it can be quite complicated, but we started off with really simple things. He sent me some pictures he took, and he put bugs on uh, my face and this, you know, and then we started doing really stupid, asinine things just for fun, but we were learning, you know. But we eventually started getting more serious and started discussing ways to make our images pop, you know, rather than just plain. I'll get a picture in my mind of what I want, and then I would just, like a treasure hunt, go out and look for it and find it. I wanted a shot for Halloween of uh, my two grandchildren running through a cemetery at night with lanterns, like old-fashioned lanterns. And um, I asked them uh, if they would come with me to the cemetery, and my granddaughter says, I'm not going to a cemetery. <laughs> so, so I said, well, okay. So uh, 
I went out in Rogers Field and had them both with the lanterns running across the field. Well, then I had to go to the cemetery and find a good spot, take pictures of that. And then I had to turn the day into night, put them in there. And then I thought, eh, some lightning would look good in the background and bad clouds, you know, and uh, it came out pretty good, you know. I love taking pictures of wildlife. I really got into bird photography. It probably started with um, living right here and we'd put a bird feeder outside our bay window in the kitchen. So when my wife and I would be eating breakfast, um, you know, you get all these birds coming by and then uh, I start reading up more and more about the birds and how to track different birds. And then that led to, you know, Metro Beach is so close and come the migration season, Metro Beach is one of the top places where birds stop by when they're migrating. So going to Metro, you don't know what you're gonna see. And uh, it's, again, it's like a treasure hunt. When I got married, we moved to St. Clair Shores. Uh, we like St. Clair Shores. It's uh, such a nice little town. Um, it's near the water. It's near the park, Metro Park. It's downtown Detroit. It's a half hour away. We like to go downtown. I mean, it's got everything you ever wanted. So um, we moved here and uh, I've been here ever since. And it's always fun taking pictures in St. Clair Shores because again, you got the lake. Um, I like the Harbor Cruise. The Harbor Cruise is always fun to take pictures of the people, the cars. Um, Veterans Park, Memorial Park, Champagne Park, they're all great places to, to shoot. You know, I used to always think uh, being a comedian would be a great way to make a living because you can make people laugh. You know, well, I can't make people laugh so much, but uh, when they like my pictures, you put them on Facebook and I get a lot of likes. Uh, hey, I'm putting a little sunshine in somebody's day. I would define my photography as just um, some old guy out there having a good time, taking picture, whatever catches his fancy. My future in photography is to just keep doing what I'm doing, just having a good time, waking up in the morning, going out and looking for something that's going to bring a smile to my face and maybe somebody else's. Buy yourself a camera, you'll have some fun.